This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media East of Scotland Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's always a pleasure to be your host and I'm excited to welcome my guest this week. It is a privilege to welcome the manager of Whitburn. It's a welcome to, pleasure to welcome Darren Wilson. Thanks Scott, um, thanks very much for inviting me on the on the show. I'm really looking forward to this evening and to go through the East of Scotland with you. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. We've, it's been a while since we've been on the, the show, kind of doing the, the East of Scotland. It's been a fairly, kind of, I think the weather's kind of hated as the past few weeks, Darren. As, as you know, I think every time we've tried to do this, it's been, oh, the weather's kind of interfered. But we're, we're here now. We've only got six games to talk about, Darren. But I think it's at the point of the season we are very, very exciting between now and the end of the season. So I think we're, we're in, the, in all of the four leagues. It's going to be fairly interesting what's going to be happening. Yeah, I mean, you, you can even see that in the English Premiership. We don't know who's going to win that yet. Um, we don't yeah. know. Probably a little bit more of a stick on it who's going to go down there. But I think in all the leagues in East of Scotland, having a wee look before I came on the show, because you probably focus on your own more than anything else, um, it, it's really exciting um, across the across the board. Right, let's obviously go and take a flat bond so far, uh, Darren. Obviously, last season, really, really impressive in winning the second division obviously going up in the first division and, and then the promotion hunt. In terms of kind of last season, I remember speaking to you at the start of the season and you were kind of saying about you you's wanted to kind of push high as well when you thought with it, the way the league was close, you thought you were able to do so. And you look at the league, Darren, and the ways it performed so far, you have won back-to-back titles. Obviously, the, the, the objective was to climb up the leagues and try and kind of keep your nucleus together in your squad and... I think you were more. I think you were keen on improving as well. So I'm, I think it's very, very interesting to see how well you have done in coming up. But how would you can assess your your season in the first division so far? Well, I think we would have every bit of success in the sense that we've achieved great things in the past two years. But mm-hmm. really, a club, um, and certainly me as a person, and and my coaching staff are not really anyone to rest on our laurels and. And, and stick to consolidation. That was that was never something that that we wanted to do. I, I do believe that if you you know you, you aim for the, the peak or the pinnacle and, and then you find where you're at, and that's probably where our season's taken us. To be honest, Scott, we, we've gave it the best shot that, that we can, and and there's been barriers that are presented in our way. But the thing that I would say is that I've learned loads this year, probably more so in my managerial career. Um, you know, coming out of academy football, realistically, this is my first stint in management. So mm-hmm. I'd say that I've learned a lot this year. My players have learned a lot this year. And I'd say that the first division, and I mean this genuinely, is probably one of the challenge, most challenging divisions in, in the East of Scotland. You know, there's there's anybody can win every week. Um, and yeah, I think we're enjoying the, enjoying the journey. Um, we're we're obviously sitting fifth, as I'm sure you'll, you'll touch on in a minute, but we want to try and challenge, and, and that's what we wanted at the start of the season. So I'm happy where we are. I'd probably say that I'm not happy about how things have went for us this year. Um, we, we had to sell one of our, our strongest players because I gave my word to that player um, pre-season, and, and it's something that I didn't want to do. So we've had to recruit as the season's going on. Um We've had real long-term injuries. I think we've had two operations this year. Um, we've had, well, so is everyone. It's not an excuse, but in terms of Whitburn yeah. as a whole, um, realistically, we've not we've not fielded or we've not had a strong squad throughout the season. And, and in the big games that we've we've kind of lost, we, we've played a lot of boys either out of position or we've had to play a lot of younger players. But again, going back to it. I, I'm happy, and I see that as actually a learning and a, and, a, and a challenge in itself. So, yeah, in a nutshell, we're doing all right, and and we'll see what the next the next two months brings. You obviously mentioned the the kind of the signing 
uh, the the departure in in the summer as well. How big a character was he to replace? Because he he brought so looking at last season. I remember kind of when we were doing the team of the season. I was asking a lot of managers in the, the east of Scotland. I think I maybe asked yourself, and straight away he was a first name in everybody's list, and it was just like he's a big, big person to replace, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we, we all know we're talking about Lou McGuire, so you know, mm-hmm. I think to go on Lithgow, and, and there were several low and league clubs, and and actually league leagues above that were looking at that Lou, or that we heard that were looking at Lou. Nothing directly, but. Um, yeah, he's been a big player for us. He scored a lot of goals, he created a lot of goals, and he was a massive link in terms of how, how we want to play. Um, not to give too much away, but we recruit based on position-specific characteristics, mm-hmm. if you like. So if a good player becomes available, it, it, then we won't just take him based on the fact he's a good player. We'll, we'll look at how he plays a group and how he fits into that into that group. And, and Louis was a huge part of everything that we'd done. Um, it's taken us a while to, to get back to where we are, but I, I genuinely believe it. And we played on Saturday in a friendly, and it's probably the the first time where I've felt like we've really clicked again. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the players that we have just now and the squad that we've got coming back at the right point of the season, we're probably only getting to that stage now. I, I just wish that we had have got there quicker, but that, yeah. that's okay. I mean, it's probably, again, going back to Scott, it's a little bit of learning for me. In the summer, we were very specific about who we wanted to recruit, and we were never looking to replace Louis. But when he signed a new deal, I, I promised him that if the right club came up and, and the right financial situation <laughs> came up, then then we would, we would do that, and we would do that for any young player, um, mm-hmm. to be honest. It's, it's not something that we could have kept him at the end of the season. He was on a deal, but yeah, um, I wouldn't. I would never give my word up. Um, and and he's he's hopefully going to do well. So good luck to him. And it's just taken us that wee bit longer, but we're we're happy with where we are at the minute. Yeah, I mean, and you look as well like last season and into this season. I'm at, I'm trying to get the the goal scoring stats up, but there's there's a lot of players in it. Nobody is as as that does as well for for Whitburn than than May Ross Crawford as well. How impressed have you been with him and his his step up and like there's a lot, Darren Liddell as well. I mean, there's a lot of really good players in that Whitburn side who really caught the eye last season and they've, they've contributed as well this season. So you must be happy that they've kind of done well at the at the level. Yeah, I think it's important that when you, you jump up a league that you give time and you give respect to the players that have got you there. I think that's how you can end up losing a dressing room is that you end up just almost letting a lot of their mates go. You know, so we've, yeah. we've, organically that happens. You know, there'll be boys that make that step up and, and it's just too much. Or there'll be boys who go up and they shine. Ross and, and Darren specifically, if, if those are the two we're, we're talking about, you know, they were ready to make the step up. And again, we will only sign players that hopefully can. You're not going to get them all right. There, there's mistakes that I'll make along the way in recruitment and every club in East of Scotland will make mistakes. But, you know, I think that the players that come to us, it's maybe not even so much about them individually. It's about nurturing them in terms of the right place for them to be. Um, I feel like we've got the relationship right with a lot of players. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's why they enjoy it. That's why they want to sign again. That's why they want to play for us because, you know, they love it. And, and obviously we've done well the last two years and then, and then obviously we've picked up uh, the Centenary Cup this year as well. So success is, is there and it's because we've got good people as well as, as, as good players. So I'm, I'm really happy with how the two of them are doing, but I'm happy with how all the rest of the team have made that jump as well. Yeah, who's been some of the other kind of players on the side as well that have really kind of caught your eye and how well they've done this season? Like there's, like looking at the kind of goal difference as well, I mean, 12 wins for 20 games, sitting in fifth place, 22 goals, uh, 20 goal, two goals ahead in the goal difference. And you look at the side as well, it's like one thing that really catches my eye when I look, look at the lineup every week, very, very consistent when it can be. And I think that's quite important for a side like that one. Like I don't think he's carrying a big squad. And I think that's quite important that you've got that kind of lead, that kind of stability. And there's a few players in there who. I think you would agree. Would probably be, would would do really well at a higher level, but they they obviously they obviously know something about Whitburn, and obviously they, they like what, what you're doing and what the kind of culture is at the club, and I think that's really really eye catching. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's difficult to single players out because mm-hmm. I'm very cautious that we're coming into a stage where I, I need the full <laughs> squad to be at it. Um, yeah. I think there's certain boys that, you know, if, if we're going to put, you know, Sammy Watson coming into the side has brought yeah. a lot of um, massive signing from, from Armadale for us this year at a point where realistically we were on a poor run and we couldn't we couldn't put a squad together. We went down to Newton Grange with, with seven under twenties. You know, so okay. it's just been it's been a year where there's been constant things coming at us. Um but yeah, bringing Sammy in was, was really was a really good addition to the squad. And Sammy, I knew him as a as a player playing with him and I knew what he would bring and getting that one over the line was a big one for me. Um in terms of the club direction as well as uh, getting the results back on pitch. Um, but you know, again, there's been a there's been a lot there's been a lot of good good things that have happened. Harrison Edwards coming into the group, flying at the start of the season, you know, scored two goals against the left goal in that cup final and nurturing nurturing talent. So there's an addition there in terms of that pathway. Jack Henderson moving into the middle of the pitch. We didn't have a centre midfielder. Stevie Clark was out injured. Andy Thompson was carrying a knock, and we put Hendo in there, and he's been brilliant. <laughs> To be honest, mm-hmm. it's, it's been a real step for Jack moving into the middle of the pitch. So there's been things that have happened by 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 organic or or just naturally, and and there's been things that have happened because of the situation. Um, but there's there's loads of good areas that that I'm excited about. Um, it's not for me. It's not a case that you put a team on the pitch and you, you of, of course. You try and win games, but it's not a case of looking at one game at a time. You, we try and look. Like it's a five-year plan, so mm-hmm. you know it, it'd be hard to single any real individuals out. Um, but I think collectively everyone's improving, and there's bits and areas that we improve on as a, as a group. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers the question fully. I don't want to give too much praise to somebody, and somebody feels like they're. <laughs> they're not getting it so yeah. yeah and it's it's tough and obviously you, you kind of brought up there the kind of five-year plan and that was something i wanted to kind of touch on with you like when you think of what burn in the past you think obviously like a real kind of pivotal name in the juniors and one of the clubs that obviously kind of used the opportunity to to make that step up into the kind of pyramid system but how, what was what was that like you know being at the club and kind of as you say about the five-year plan like Making that step into the east of Scotland and, and been one of the clubs that obviously can kind of jump through the places have been doing. A couple obviously try to do the same thing kind of below as well. And what's that journey been like, obviously, kind of taking the club from a big name in the juniors to now kind of hopefully going to kind of go to the next level in the east of Scotland? It's something that really excites me personally. Um, I grew up watching a junior club. Um, mm-hmm. my, my whole life was around being in that local environment and yeah. probably going and watching Whitburn. Um, so I know what the fan base was like and I know what the expectation was like. That, that The five-year plan for me personally was I'm a great believer in youth players and, and mm-hmm. developing youth players. That's my background. And it, it, it frustrated me for a while that a lot of young players were being missed. Um, and, and they were they were dropping through the net, and I thought, right, well, I, I can't talk about it and then not do something about it. So when when we went to Whitburn, the first thing for me was actually about putting an under twenties in place, and and, and they've okay. done incredibly well. Um, and when we recruited players from initiative teams that had came out of the loop, um, and also young players that we felt that were out of the loop that could could make that jump. So that was the first thing in terms of the plan. Because you're right, we we can't. We've got a big squad actually, but we can't afford to keep buying and and, and bringing in players. We need to create our own, really. And that was the first part of the plan. Um, the next part is to make Whitburn a club that the town were proud of again. Um, there was a real disconnect in the community, a little bit old school. Um, like that's the juniors, and then there's a community club. So mm-hmm. the, the next part was really about that connection with. Whitburn FC and how we get young kids along to the game. So I think the, the most important thing, and it's great to win leagues, it's great to win competitions, but the most important thing is that we've actually got people that want to come and watch us. You know, we've went from a crowd of around maybe 50, 60 every week to, to 280, 290 
Um, you know, and then when we play Armadale, it's like six fifty. You know, and we talk about derbies, but like that's a that's a derby. So we want that excitement back, and and again, we wanted a club that could almost emulate what Kelty are doing. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, that's everybody's dream, and there's not just Whitburn that are that are there. So, but you need to get things in place, and it has to be sustainable. It has to be something that we can continue to do. So, you know, the connection with with the FCA. Now at Burn FC, um, mm-hmm. it's important that they're they're um, a great club and, and they've got a, a lot of direction. So yeah, we we wanted to make improvements to the the team to the community, but then the next part for us is the ground. You know mm-hmm. what, what we have to do with the facility. Um, you know the, the the plan is that we we will get the pitch redone in the summer. Okay. Um, the changing rooms are getting done at the minute. Which is great. Um, players want to feel like they're they're treated. Um, the pitch is holding us back a little bit. Um, we'd okay. probably be a lot higher in the league just now if, if we could play on an artificial surface every week because of the brand that we try and play. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the idea is the pitch will get done this year. Um, we'll look to get floodlights in place, so planning permission and a lease of the ground with the registered charity. So we'll hopefully look for, we, we you know, it's, it's difficult for us to apply for anything at the minute. So we'll look to get floodlights and become a licensed club. And then realistically, we'll, we'll look to, to put down a, an AstroTurf um, at Central Park. That's the that's the plan. That's that's the vision. Um, but personally, on the pitch, it was about getting to the Premier in five years so that when that journey takes off, we're not just winging it. We, we know where we mm-hmm. want to get where we know where we want to be um, and, we, and we want to compete at, at the highest level possible so yeah I, I, I'm excited um, it's taking time and it's going to take time but we need to persevere with it um, and we need, we need to hopefully trust that, that it will happen so no excellent it sounds it sounds really good and obviously we'll, we'll kind of get your thoughts in the the overall kind of the, the first division when we, we touch on it we only had six games at the weekend obviously the I think it was Storm Kathleen, was it called? It was fairly, it was a, it was a bit of a nightmare, as you know, as well. And obviously, Ben Whitburn's game was called off. So we'll get into but six games, but we'll kind of do a wee bit. We'll, we'll look into the kind of leagues and we'll kind of get your thoughts on how everything stands at the moment. Uh, Darren, we'll start with the, the Premier Division. There was only one game. Uh, Hutchison Vale, 4 2 winners over the Donald Bluebell. Uh, a double from Joe Viola and goals from Ringe and Signorini. That meant uh, Hutchie Vale uh, returned to third place in the table. Uh, they're 11 points behind Broxburn. Broxburn have played two games left. I've been really impressed with the job being done at Hutchie Vale this season. Like, just from kind of to even be Ian anywhere near third place, I think it's a terrific achievement. Yeah, I mean, it's a club I played for as a boy, actually. So a wee bit of isolation, do check in on the results. And, you know, Ryan and Fraser are great, but. They continuously, you know, have great players playing for them. Yeah. And, and in terms of the structure of the club, in terms of the dynamics of how they, you know, they, they massively overachieve, um, in my opinion. Um, and, and, yeah, a great win against Dundonald because they've actually started to pick up again, haven't they? Um, and, and really push for results. So, yeah, Viola seems to always score a lot of goals. Eh? Um, so, no, you know, 4 2 result. If you were picking it before the game, you probably wouldn't know which way that game would go. But yeah, I think you, you'll correct me here, I'm sure. But you know, they're third in Genefield, they've got a few games in hand. Eh? But yeah, massive achievement for Hutchie to get, get up that table and, and be sitting in third place. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Genefield are uh, three points behind, obviously, uh, played three games less. I think Dunbar can, can get close to them as well. And obviously, Socky, I think that. That could be an interesting. I think even if they kind of finish in that area, I think it's been a terrific achievement. But just kind of overall in the Premier Division, eh, Darren, it looks like Broxburn are, are nine points clear. Musselburgh have played a game less. Eh, if Gfield could maybe get better. It looks Broxburn's to lose. How impressed have you been with them this season? And could they be a side if they, they're able to obviously kind of hang on? Could they be a side that could match against one of the, the best teams in the West and the South and potentially go for the the thirdest side to go up to the lower league. In terms of in terms of Broxburn, I think they've came a long way. Um mm-hmm. because they're a huge club in West Lothian and, and in the East of Scotland now after being a big club in the junior. But yeah. You know, they've had some excellent Scottish Cup runs, you know, um mm-hmm. 
of late, but in the league they've they've probably been mid table, third, fourth, maybe higher. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah, Pitts and Billy and you know Marco, Derek, they've done a they've done a great job there. I think they've brought one thing that they have brought is experience and they've mm-hmm. they've made a real investment into their squad across the board. It's a great squad actually. And um, we played them we played them in the cup, it was two all. Um mm-hmm. we got penalties, but you know, Gary Brass up front played with Gary and, and Errol. They, they're going to get you goals, eh? Um so that and then they've signed the goalkeeper and I think Penny Cook oh, what came from, is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. You know if I was picking a team before the start of the season it would have probably been Brock's one, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I know the muscle Brian Liam will not thank me for that, but I just feel like they've got that experience to potentially churn it out. Um and, and good luck to them. And in terms of whether they can they can do it against the teams in the West, it's, it's, it's a difficult challenge. Um, I think it will depend on how that goes in the West as well, in terms of who wins that league. Because I know that in the past, you know, teams have not had a license. I don't know if there's yeah, any. Yeah, well, it could be Beath could be the same again this year if they win it. it could be it could be essentially between. I think it's likely to be Dolby Star, to be honest. So I think it could be between Bro- if Broxburn, it could if Bead win, it could be between Broxburn and Dolby. And I'd be fairly confident Broxburn would win that. Well, obviously, being an East lad, I'd, I'd be I'd be up for Broxburn doing it. I think you know mm-hmm. well, we've done it last year, and I'd love for Broxburn to go and do it. I think that they can beat anybody on the on their day. Um, they've got the players to do it. Um, the West I certainly would be a very very exciting game. You know, if that was Clyde Bank, Beath, or um, you know, on our, our west side, that could. I think there's four in that, that top end of that division. Yeah, St. Cardiff's and Ockham Lake, I think, are, are close as well. So it could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a good shootout. It'd be definitely a game that I'd be at. Um, no, definitely. Yeah. How that goes, but you know, I hope they, I hope they can. I hope, I hope they can. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and there's a, there's obviously a few sides there that are, are maybe kind of disappointed that they've they've not got closer so far. Like I think Genefield will maybe be a bit disappointed. Dunbar as well. Some good sides in there like Halaby, obviously who've had really good runs. I, I think there's a there's a lot of good sides in the Premier Division. Who are you kind of been most surprised by in terms of the kind of season they've had so far? Um, I mean, there's a there's a load of different things in that again. And I think you know Dunbar have done great. Hainsey and Gary have done really well down there and. Mm-hmm. You know, another team that we played this year, um, really strong. Again, another strong run in the Scottish Cup. We were un- unlucky, you know, the East Fife game. Um, yeah. Very unlucky, you know, and, and they've, they've done great. Um, Hilly Beath, poor start, if I'm honest. I thought that they would have been up there challenging. Um, and I think Fraser will probably be a bit gutted that he's not closer to the top with the squad that they had at the start of the year as well in terms of soccer. Um, I know that they would, would have wanted to, to have been challenging. So I don't know much about Genefield, if I'm being perfectly honest. We'll get them watched over the next next mm-hmm. week or so. We've, we've got them in the cup. Um, again, it's a Perth team so and, and they've done really well of, of late, but I think they've they've lost a few and there was a managerial change if I, if I know as much as I do. Um, so, yeah, I think... I think I'd be probably surprised at the bottom, the bottom end more. There's a few teams that I've maybe thought would have been higher up, but are not. But I think across the board, score like Roxburn, Marsobra. Again, that's that's kind of who I thought would have been at the top. Right, we'll move into the first division, Darren. We only had one game to talk about. It was probably a game you had uh, a close eye on. Uh, Donny Pace, one to one at home to. Uh, Harry Watt. They had to work hard for it though. It was a hard fought game. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that Donny uh, Harry Watt were 1 0 up. Uh, they scored from a penalty and then a double from uh, just looking at here. Uh, Kyle Tumble scored a double. And Donny Pace, that, may, that means they moved six points clear. Uh, St Andrews have games in hand. Obviously, yourselves have games in hand as well. It came on Newton Green Star. Donny Pace, though, they kind of set a marker. How have, they, how have you been impressed with them this season? Like, how would you kind of assess them at the moment? Um, I, again, like every every squad in that first division, they've got a really good a good team, um, especially when they get their best 11 on the pitch. Um, Danny's a good manager. and You know, Alan Moffat does really well with the group in terms of how they, they train. So I'm, I'm impressed by, by their pitch. I'm impressed by what they do 
um, in terms of how they play. Our games were quite even against them. Unfortunately, we had the really bad injury to Danny Farrell in the home game, um, which put a bit of a dampener on things. But um, Danny Pace have been really good. You know, they've been they're at the top of the league for a reason, and, and you know, Danny will push them all the way. Um, they've been trying to get into that Premier. You know, they tried. I think they were a bit disappointed they didn't do it last year. They were unlucky um, last season. It certainly looks like they'll be in the top three. Um, they've got the points in the bag, and yeah, I mean, they've, they've been, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, they've, they've been probably the, the well, one of the best teams in the league. So, um, difficult to comment too much until the season's finished, but you know, it's one of them where they're at the top for a reason, and and um, yeah, good luck to them, Kyle. I mean, a left goal lad, so. It was good to see him doing well, but at the same time, uh, it probably didn't want him to score the two penalties, to be honest. But, I wouldn't um, have thought so, no. Um, yeah, again, beat in terms of Dunny Pace against Eddie Watt, probably two of the best teams, you know, in terms of mm-hmm. football, playing against each other. So it was an exciting one watching the result coming in. You know, we had a friendly, so there was always news news coming in. So, um, aye, I don't really know what else to say on the matter. <laughs> Without giving too much or, or being, uh, so we'll move on if that's all right. Right, you mentioned obviously Donny Pace been been kind of you think they're rock solid for top three. I would imagine you'd think Whitburn are going to take one of the spots as well. Who's the kind of third team in that? You think what the the dangers like who's the who do you look at as the kind of like between St Andrews, Camelin, and Newton Grange is the the team to kind of be most afraid of? Um, anyone. Gen- genuinely, I, I think that, like I said to you before, this is the way that our league works. Um, mm-hmm. The teams at the bottom can, can genuinely beat the teams at the top. You know, last year we went into games where you were thinking, okay, right, we, we, we should come away with a win. You know, and, and if we score if we score early, then it will be a case of, right, can we go and get another one? Whereas we're, we're probably more in a, in, a, in a footballing league where it's, Anybody can beat anybody. And I know mm-hmm. I referred to the Premiership earlier, but it kind of genuinely is like that. There'll be teams that are mm-hmm. fighting for their life in the last couple of games of the season. So you look at the running and our running's really hard. Like we've got mm-hmm. a really hard running. But we've we've been there before. I think getting over the line is the hardest thing to do. Like and in actual fact in, in conference X, it was easier chasing teams because there was no expectation. Whereas when we had the points in the back against St Andrews last year, there was always that nervousness that you were going to mess up. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't think that anyone's nailed on. I think maybe Dunny Pace because they've got so many, like so much points in the bag. But mm-hmm. I think there'll be a lot of twists and turns between now and the end of the season uh, for for everyone, um, not just not just the top teams I think at the bottom as well Who's been kind of the standout team you've come up against outside the, the kind of top four because there's sides in there like Leith as well I've been very impressed with Eric Watt as you say I think they've done really well I think teams like Armistead have maybe just been kind of a bit of a difficult start but I think they're really kind of taking sides like, who's really stood out to you when you've come up against them this season? Eric Watt or like by far the best football side we've played like, mm-hmm. and I tip my hat to BJ when we were in yeah. the division uh, too. Um, what I really like about them is, is they stick to what they do. So they mm-hmm. do, and naturally as well. Like if I had five days a week to, to train, not I know they don't train, but to watch players and to invest time and make them better athletes, and then they should be. To be honest, um, and they're playing a game on a Wednesday, and then you know playing on a Saturday, they should know exactly what he wants from the squad. But mm-hmm. they're probably yeah. I mean, we played them through their one all. It was a very good game, a very tactical game, and and then, and then Barney scored an overhead kick. <laughs> he was just like, we draw the game one all, and, and you can shake their hand and say, Do you know what, that's a real class game of football. Like they're both teams yeah. in a different style and a different way. So, yeah, I think that outside of that group, then probably them, we we played Leith at a time where they weren't maybe at it. If I'm being honest, we beat them five one. Um, but I know Hume and, I, and Rob, and Rob they, they, they're, they're, they're flying at the minute, to be honest. We, our game was off mm-hmm. again the other week and it's one of them where you're thinking, right, maybe not, we've 
it's kind of not caught them at the right time, if that makes sense. So, because mm-hmm. they're really well, I think bringing one in from you know Trenants really yeah. brought strength to them, and they've got great players as well. Like Sonny Swanson's unbelievable. Um, mm-hmm. I really like the boy Dylan Geetrix as well. I think he's I think he's a really good player. So, yeah, I can understand why you said Leaf. We just didn't really catch them well. They were probably probably on their game. Um, for me, it would it would probably hurt it well. Uh, we'll move into the second division. Obviously, there was uh, four games actually taking place over the weekend. Uh, Stirling Rooney beat Newbra 2 1 on Friday night, and then we saw Thornton Hibbs really impressive 8 1 1 over Edinburgh United. East House is lovely, beat Tweed now 3 0. Edinburgh College uh, drew 1 1 with People Rovers. Uh, Thornton Hibbs, obviously, they're on a really good run at the moment. They're looking pretty good for most. I think I'm, just, I'm right in saying I think they've won the last 11 games. I think they've won 12. 12 games of one in a row. Thornton Hibs are, are finding a really good run of form. They're only 10 points behind Bowness and that, and the run of form, they'll be, they'll be trying to catch them. They might not, it might be too late, but they're certainly giving a good account of, of, of that. And you're, you're thinking, looking at Bowness, Thornton and Armadale, they, look pretty, they all look pretty good for promotion right now. Yeah, I mean, Bowness have pretty much won that league, I would think. Um, you know, yeah, after a team that were doing really well outside the, the top four in our league, you know, Bonus would would give anyone a run for the money and they've, and they've mm-hmm. shown that. So I think I, I don't you know, I don't know, but I think that's done. Um I would I would think that Willie will be able to get them over the line. Um mm-hmm. for sure. And I think they'll probably be looking towards next season, to be honest. Yeah. Um yeah, Thornton for us I was actually watching a lot of our highlight videos back um I think that last week and you know we drew with Thornton at home last year um, and Craig's done great with him to be honest like the, their attention at players is, is good so that they, they seem they don't really seem to change their squad much um, it seems to be a very Fife based squad you know we're, we're mm-hmm. going close to Glasgow Wedding for a Fife yeah. West Lovia and Falkirk district you know they seem to just be a kind of they're all in it for each other um, and I think talk, I think it's Thompson, I think I might be getting that right. Um, yeah, 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 Thompson, yeah. He seems to score so many goals. Yeah. Um, but yeah. again, just been at Thornton for since I can remember. Um, so I think I think they're done. The, the the other thing I would say is that I'm not sure about third, if I'm being honest. And, okay. and I'd, I'd love Coco and Leeper to do it, but Edinburgh South for getting a wee bit tight. I think you know they had a great win the week before. Um, against Burnt Island, I think it was a 4-0 victory and I thought, right, mm-hmm. but I, I looked at it just before I jumped on and I was thinking, yeah, so I, I think it's, I think that'll be exciting as well um, in terms of that that one, so yeah, I will see. Yeah. That, I Did other games did you want to touch base on? Yeah, I was going to ask your thoughts on obviously Stalin Uni as well, another kind of Uni side that have, have kind of punched, a, punched quite well this season, obviously they've come up against them last season, and Edinburgh College and, and People's Rollers, too, kind of similar to the match sides. But I think Stirling Uni, I think a lot of credit has got to go to them for, for how well they've done this season. Yeah, we, we played them in the cup. Um, ah, right. Yeah. A really challenging game because, you know, it's like good, congratulations to, to Geds, actually, for, for, for doing so well in the East of Scotland Cup. We, we, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So Stirling Uni seconds, you know, we played them last, year um, and the games were really tough um, this year was a totally different side, it looked like a completely new side and it's one of them where they seem to have a way of playing but sometimes that can almost be a detriment because they just try and do the same thing over and over again so once you suss it out it can be but yeah in, in their league they, they've done really well <laughs> um, so it surprised me our game against them but yeah it sounds like um they're doing really well in the, in the league and yeah they've got some really good players I think it's just about putting it all together for that and it's, it's learning I suppose that's why they're, they're there so yeah yeah absolutely right we'll move into third division we don't have any games to talk about uh, for all five games get postponed but looking at the table West Calder and Bathgate look pretty good for promotion and it looks like Hart Hill Royal or Hoyk are probably going to be in the running for third Who's kind of stood out to you in that league? I think, well, it's a strange one for me because we play friendlies against the majority of teams that you've just mentioned. They're obviously not yeah. like 
Not <laughs> 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 for a Wednesday night friendly. Um, so, Bathgate we've played uh, twice actually, um, mm-hmm. and friendly. You know, Gordon Wilson's done great, great there. I think the um, for for the resources that he has. Um, they seem to do really well in terms of the ability of football. Again, I, I played at Bathgate. It's a great pitch. Um, and, you know, I, with Ali McInnes has just went there. So there's always that bit that we, we hope that he goes on in there and does and does well. So they've not surprised me. I, I thought that they would be up there. But, yeah, I, I think that the the West Calder and Bathgate would be a, a stick on for, for promotion. West Calder. Slightly different to Bathgate, I'd say, in terms of the way that they play football. Um, Bob and, and Coyne have done great up there. They've recruited players that have, have been around, you know, in terms of experience. Um, they've added a kind of flourishing of, of, of quality as well with the younger players. Um, and, it, and it's a good mix that, you know, they've got a good goalkeeper, they've got a good striker in terms of Jacko and Shawzy. So, you know, they, they'll, I, I'd always thought that they would be up there as well. I think that's going to be a really close run and I don't, I think the last game was um, a West Calder win at Bathgate so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the remaining games play out in that and then the Hart Hill game uh, we played in a friendly, it was a very mixed game so it was like 20s first team um, Hart Hill played a decent brand of football, they, they tried to play as well which was, was really cool and really good. Hoyk we played at the weekend but I think they had played almost boys that hadn't been playing. So we played them two weekends ago, sorry. Um, I don't know too much about them, but coming down, I think they would have been looking to bounce straight back up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who takes that third spot, but I think this, the top two is pretty much nailed on. Yeah, so. yeah, I think, yeah, I think it is going to be between, obviously, Hart Hill and Hoyk, and I think it's going to be very intriguing to see what happens. We do have some games uh, during the week. Uh, just looking at Tuesday night, Crossgates played in Donald Bluebell, and then the second division, Edinburgh United against Honest and Primrose, and you've got Kennaway Star versus Stoughton Hibs. And then some fairly interesting games on Wednesday. Elwyn Carty host Jean Peel Swifts, Hutchie Vale versus Dunbar. First division, Armiston versus Vela Leaven. You've got Lacour, Welfare against Kakodi and Dysart. Uh, second division, Edward South versus O'Keefe. This will be an interesting game. Burn Island versus Newborough in three games in the third division. Bathgate versus Livingston United, Hart Hill Royal versus Fault House, eh, Pompson versus Stony Burn, and in the second round of the League Cup, Newton Green Star versus Bonness. So it's an, going to be an interesting week in the East of Scotland, Darren. Obviously, Blackburn don't have a game in midweek, but what game would jump out to you if you're planning and looking this week? This week, where would you kind of go if you um, had the time to go? A few for different reasons. Um, you know, the, the, the Bonness Newton Grange game will be interesting to see how that plays out. I think Bonus will be quite keen to see how they would compare against the top end of that um, first division. Uh, the Hart Hill Fault House game for, for a local element, you know, I think Fault House have recruited really well, actually. Um, they've put a lot of infrastructure in there. You know, Sharpies yeah. went in and, and with Ike and, and done, you know, really good things in terms of infrastructure. So it looks like they're building and Hart Hill against them will be uh, it'll be a really interesting, interesting one. Um, I think we we'll, we'll probably send people to um, local for natural mm-hmm. reasons. We've, yeah. not, um, we've got them on Saturday, and then we've not played Kirkcaldy yet, so we'll, we'll have we'll have someone watching that. But I know I think it's going to be a really exciting running across the the remaining games of the, of the season. Um, but if I had to go and pay money to go and watch one, it would probably be Bonus Athletic, Newton Grange. Yeah, I think that'd be quite a, an interesting game. I quite like uh, looking at the kind of the Dunbar game as well. I think that'd be quite interesting to go and see as well. I think that could be quite. Uh, Who did you say? Uh, Dunbar, Dunbar play Hutch, uh, away at Hutchie Bale. I think that'd be quite interesting. In terms of a football game, I think you know, that would be a really yeah. good one to go and watch. Yeah, no, I would agree with that actually. Um, Edinburgh's a bit far from me. I'm, I'm Larbert, so. Yeah, it's a bit far for me, I'm in Ayrshire, but I'll, I'll keep an eye, I'll keep an eye on it uh, Wednesday night, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, in terms of Whitburn, uh, Darren, obviously the only game that I can see uh, is local on the 13th of April, which is obviously that Saturday, and then the fixtures I've got uh, has no league game until the 11th of May, but that will obviously be kind of changing, I think you'll maybe know better than me, maybe the schedule. 
Uh, away to Kirkcaldy and Dysart in the, the 11th of May, and then looks like the last game's going to be Newton Green Star home. That could be quite a pivotal game in the, the uh, challenge for promotion. In terms of the fixtures, obviously, a lot of game, uh, football still to be played. Ten games between now and the end of the season. Like I, I've spoken to a lot of managers who've got that kind of amount of games left, and I've, I've asked them, said, would you rather have the points on the board or would you rather be kind of chasing that target with games kind of every couple, every few days? How, where do you kind of stand on that? And have you kind of had a chance to kind of look at your fixtures or have, they, have you, you kind of got an idea of what's coming? Or is it still kind of too early to say? I think there's, there's probably a few elements to that. Um, if we've got points on the board... You're probably saying I'd rather be chasing. If, yeah. if, if we're if we're chasing, you'd probably rather say you've got points on the board. G- genuinely, from experience of the last few years, it, it was a lot easier to sleep at night when um, we were we were chasing. I don't mm-hmm. know why. Um, for me, it was always you're always looking over your shoulder, and you're always thinking, right, if we drop points here, then then they could catch us here, and. That that was a that was a tough one for me last year with St Andrews because it literally went to the game up there, and and you know it was a case of if we win, we'll win the league. If if they win, they might catch us. Um, so yeah, I think for me our fixtures are out to be honest. So we 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 play Loco Saturday, we will play Oakley. Okay. Um, I think. We probably look at the, the Saturday game and just think, right, let's just try and get a win Saturday. Yeah. Um I know that that's a cliche thing to say, but you're probably you're probably looking at just banking points. And, and it's a weird one because people will look at the table and say, right, well, we'll get three off the aim and when we get the point here, there's there's no point. <laughs> you would change that about six or seven times. So hmm. uh we'll focus on Oakley. We, we, as I say, we've got a really tough run and I've I've got it up here. So we you know we play here at what, twenty third. Um we go to Home to Leaf. Um, we're at Home to Kirkcaldy. Uh, we're with no game on the fourth at the minute, but I think that'll probably get filled, and I think it'll depend on the, the game on the twentieth against Genefield. Yeah. Um, and then we we go to St Andrews on a midweek, which I think is just you know it could be one of the biggest games of the season for both clubs, and and you're playing at midweek. I think it's a wee bit of a waste, you know, in terms of for, for supporters and you know things. Mm-hmm. Going but, However, that's that's the way it falls. Um, and then we play Kirkcaldy again, and then we've got Newton Grange um, potentially on the on the last day if no more games are called off. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's just about wanting to achieve the best that we can. Uh, we, yeah. we'll, we'll always push that. And somebody asked me the question the other day. We, we've we've not had a season that's just went like that. There's been loads of things like you know. We've had to recruit an assistant manager halfway through our season. You know, it's it's been a, a, a load of change throughout the season. I think for me, it's about just winning as many games as, as possible and, and seeing what happens come the end of the season. And regardless of what league we're in, like, and I mean this genuinely, we'll, we'll try and do the same again. <laughs> like, yeah, no, absolutely. Same. It's, um, it's just the way we are. So, yeah, excited. Looking forward to yeah. it. No, well, I can only wish all the best for the, the rest of the season, Darren, and thank you so much for joining me in this week's episode. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed your company. Thank you very much. No, genuinely, and I mean this, I hope for the whole of East East Scotland, you know, what you do is incredible. You know, the, there's people Thanks, that yeah. are looking at things on, on Twitter and, you know, Player of the Week and like just write-ups on games. Um, we, there's a lot of good players and a lot of good teams in, in the, the lower leagues. And I think we need to highlight that. I think it's important that we do so. So thank you for having me on, and thank you for for pulling things together because it, it's a lot of work, and you do it off, you know, pride and and the love of the game. So thank you very much. No, thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate those kind words. Very, very thoughtful of you. Thank you very much, folks. Having let's tune in. Please join us next week for a new episode. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe on all our content. We'll see you all soon. Thank you very much.